Hi, now we are going to talk about automated tests. You probably know what automated tests are. They are code that checks that other code is executing properly. But what can MCT know about your automated tests? Let's find out. All examples provided will be in Kotlin, but what I'm talking about applies to all technologies and programming languages. All examples will be provided in a single repository, and the link to this repository will be provided in the video description. So here we have a simple test written in Kotlin using GUnit 5. This test checks that 2 is equal to 1 plus 1, which is true, so this test will pass. But in this test we check that 2 is equal to 1, so this test will fail. We also have a couple of more tests, for example this test executes for 3 seconds. Now let's see how it looks in the Team City UI. So here we have a build configuration overview page, where you can see that we have a number of builds. And for each build, TeamCity reports how many tests have passed and failed. So TeamCity actually understands each individual test. Now let's go to the build overview page. Here you can see a test tree. TeamCity actually understands to which package this test belongs, and also in which classes the tests were executed, as well as each individual test. If we want to want more about tests, we go to the test tab. Here by default we see all the failed tests, but we can also see successful tests, as well as all tests. Also in this table we can see the test duration, so how much time it took to actually execute the test. And we can sort by this duration, for example we can find what is the slowest test in our source code. And then we maybe could try to optimize it. Now let's say that you have a build that executes for a long time, 10-20 minutes, maybe even an hour. It would be cool if we knew which tests have failed even though the build is still running. That's what TeamCity can do. Now, as you can see, TeamCity already knows that this build will fail even though it's still running. TeamCity even knows which tests were executed and failed at this time. And we can already work with tests that were executed. We can go to the test tab and see which tests failed. So, as soon as a single test fails, TeamCity already knows and, for example, can send a notification to Slack or email and you can start fitting this test right away. Also here we can see that this test took 15 seconds to execute. Let's try to investigate, maybe this test is too slow. We can go to the test history and see all of the time it executed. We can also see how much time it took to execute. Seems like it always takes 15 seconds to execute. Now, you might have a test that sometimes fails and sometimes succeeds even though you didn't change anything that relates to this test. Such tests are called flaky, and here we have a simple example of such test. It generates a random boolean, and if this boolean is true, it compares 2 to 1 plus 1, which is true. But if it's false, it compares 2 to 1, which is false. So in this case, this test will fail. This is by definition a flaky test, because it fails on some random condition. Now, let's see what TeamCity actually understands about this test. As you can see, TeamCity marks this test as flaky. And it also explains that the test status changed in the build without actual changes to the source code. We can again go to the test history to try to investigate this test. And we can see that in this case it succeeded, but then it failed, even though we didn't make any changes to the source code. Thus, by definition, this test is flaky. So now we can compare these two builds and try to understand why it succeeded here, but failed here. Maybe it was the agent it was executed on, or maybe it was some random condition, like in our case. Now, let's say that you have a failing test, and you want to try to investigate it. You might just copy the test name, and go to Slack and write it to someone that this test is failing. But that's not really scalable. You might have a team and might want to communicate to each member of the team that someone is investigating a test. So, TeamCity provides what's called investigations. You can click Assign Investigation and select to which member of the team you assign the investigation. For example, in this case, it will be me. You can also tell TeamCity to resolve this investigation automatically when the test is fixed. And we will not mute the test, so if it fails, the build will still be read. So now you can see this icon next to the test name, and everyone on the team will know that someone is investigating this test. In this case, it's me. 
Now, maybe you didn't manage to investigate why this test is failing and you want to reassign it to someone else. You can do that simply here. And now someone else is responsible for fixing this test. You can also go to the investigation history and see who was instigating this test at which time. Now, what if you want to investigate a flaky test? In this case, you can't fit it automatically when the test is green, because the test is green and red on random. In this case, you can assign investigation, but tell Team City to resolve this investigation manually, so it won't be fixed automatically when the test is green. So you actually might have different builds that execute the same test. For example, it might be a build on Windows or built on Linux. In this case, Team City is smart enough to understand that the test is the same and actually assigns the investigation in all builds at the same time. Now let's try to fit this test. So to fit this test, we can simply compare 2 to 2 and not 1. So now we have a new build in which only 3 tests are failing, not 4. So we fit the test. We can go to the previous build and see that the test is fixed, but investigation is still there, because Team City is smart enough to know that in this build this test is still failing, we didn't actually run a new build in this configuration. So the investigation is still here. Let's run a build in this configuration too. So now we have a new build in this configuration where we also fit the test. And now if you go to the previous build, we can see that this test is fixed and there is no investigation there because Team City understands that this test is fixed in all builds and now we can fix the investigation automatically. Now let's imagine that you want to add additional information to each test. It might be a statistical value or a screenshot that your test takes. In Team City, it's called metadata. If your test has a metadata, this icon will be shown. You can click on it and see the metadata of this test. In our case, you can see it's a screenshot, some numeric value, and even a Gradle HTML report that we can view from the UI. Now, let's see how you can actually provide the metadata. To provide the metadata, you simply need to post a magic message to the standard output, and Team City will do the rest. These magic messages are called service messages. They have to start with two hashes and Team City. And then you specify which service message you are posting. In our case, it's test metadata. In this line, we post the metadata with some string value. And in this line, we post a number specifying type number here. On this line, we post the HTML file. You can see we specify the type artifact here. In this case, we want to publish the new image, so we first have to publish it as an artifact so Team City actually stores it, and then publish it as a metadata, specifying its type image. So the metadata might be useful if you want to add additional information for your test. For example, it might be a screenshot testing where your test takes a screenshot, and then if it fails, you can see the screenshot and actually understand why the test failed. Now, imagine that you're working with technology that Team City doesn't support out of the box. For example, it might be a test runner or a different language that Team City doesn't know about. You can still publish tests via source messages as we've seen before, and Team City will understand that it's a test. A simple test might look like this. We just say that the test has started and provide its name. And then we say that the test has finished and can also provide its duration. We can also provide some additional information, like the error message, or even the stack trace. Let's see how this actually looks in the build. So here we can see the failed test, its error message, and the stack trace we reported. And you can also see that we have a successful test with the duration that we provided. Now let's talk about code coverage. Code coverage is a metric that shows how many classes, methods, or lines your tests are actually covering in your code. Let's look at this simple class. It has a simple method that if the flag is true, will return 10, otherwise it will return 20. And it has a method that we will not cover by tests at all. So here we have a test that executes the method passing the false value. So again, this line will be covered by this one, will not. And you can see the idea actually showed this, so the red one means that this line is not covered by the test.
but this line is. Now let's see how it looks in Team City UI. If your build provides code coverage, Team City will show the separate code coverage tab. Here you can see the overall coverage summary by classes, methods, and lines. You can also see a more detailed report where each class is shown. Here you can see that in this class, three lines are covered out of total of five. And this class is not covered at all. Now let's try to cover all our code by tests. Now we have a new build with a new test that covers all of our code. So you can see the code coverage is complete. You can also configure further conditions. For example, you might fail your build if the code coverage is less than 100%. <clears throat> As you can see, this build is red exactly because the percentage of line coverage is less than 100. But this build is green because we covered all of our code by tests. You can also configure different fire conditions. For example, you might not be as strict as me and only configure 80% of code coverage, not 100. You might also compare the code coverage with the code coverage from a latest successful build and say that if it's less by at least zero, so it's less, then we fail the build. So this way you make sure that your code coverage never goes down, only goes up. As you can see, Team City supports a lot out of the box but you can also extend this functionality by writing your own plugins, for example, supporting new languages and frameworks. There are also some advanced topics we didn't discuss. You can find out about them in our documentation and blog posts. All links will be provided in the repository. Thanks.